In this week's episode, we continue February Food Month with some of Oklahoma's official foods, my top five favorite foods, and I share a nice cheesy chicken and broccoli casserole recipe. We just love it. <laughs> Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. Hello everyone, and before I get started here, if you hear any loud rumbling in the background, that is the Oklahoma wind, yet again refusing to cooperate with this podcast and being quiet. <laughs> We've been under a high wind warning for most of the day. Okay, on to it. Besides oil and gas, Oklahoma is known as a big agricultural state. According to 2015 statistics, Oklahoma was ranked fourth in the nation for the number of farms in operation, second in the nation for the number of head of beef cattle, and first in the nation for rye production. Oklahoma is also ranked high in the nation for the production of wheat, canola, pecans, peanuts, and yes, sunflowers. Oklahoma has a thriving livestock industry with beef and pork being the largest of the meat exports. I can go on and on with Oklahoma's agricultural statistics, but I have a link in the show notes with a fascinating fact sheet with all these statistics in it. So check it out. Give it a read. It's a pocket edition, so you can read through it quickly. But today I'm going to talk about food. And specifically, hey, did you know Oklahoma has some official foods? We even have an official meal. Back in 1988, the Oklahoma legislature proclaimed the official meal of the state of Oklahoma. This meal is meant to reflect Oklahoma's agricultural background and southern roots. So here it is. The meats include barbecued pork, chicken fried steak, and sausage with biscuits and gravy. Uh, the vegetables include fried okra and squash, Grits, corn, and black-eyed peas. Uh, the bread, of course, of course, is cornbread. <laughs> and the desserts consist of strawberries and pecan pie. Of course, if you were to actually sit down to this meal, you would definitely be full. <laughs> the meal itself can be broken up into breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Of course, this official meal of Oklahoma is what I would like to call something I had last week. Literally, these are all foods I would normally eat, <laughs> well, like you. <laughs> now, uh, some of the uh, other official state foods include the state drink is milk, something I had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> the state fruit is strawberry, as I mentioned, it's part of the official dinner. And the state vegetable is watermelon, which is actually a fruit. That's the legislature for you. <laughs> have you attended any of the food-related festivals we have around the state? Like the big Rush Springs Watermelon Festival. I go to that every once in a while. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, El Reno's Fried Onion Burger Day Festival. Uh, Prague's Kalachi Festival. The Watonga Cheese and Wine Festival. Or how about the world's largest calf fry festival and cook-off in Veneta? <laughs> That's just a few of the many food-related events we have here in Oklahoma. To see a list uh, and to see if one's near you, check out TravelOK.com. They have a wonderful list, and it's a great site to go to learn all about the fun things that are here to do in Oklahoma. Um, if you want recipes for any of the foods I've just mentioned, I'll have links to them and more in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. This week's Blog Oklahoma writing suggestion is take part in Food Month and talk about your favorite food-related topic. I look forward to reading it. <laughs> Are you someone who blogs in or about Oklahoma? Then you already qualify for Web Ring membership. Join Blog Oklahoma today. Want to know more about Blog Oklahoma? 
Then just explore the web ring and discover some of the best blogs and podcasts in the nation. Just visit blogoklahoma.com for more information. Now, last week, I talked about the five foods that I really didn't like that much. So this week, we're going to do my top five favorite foods. Here we go. Number five, a good meatloaf with mashed potatoes. Now, if I don't make it myself, only Cracker Barrel's meatloaf will do. (laughs) Number four, taco salad. This is my go-to meal if I can't think of anything else to make. In fact, that's what I had for lunch today. (laughs) Number three, a nicely cooked medium well steak with a baked potato with all the fixings or a buttery baked sweet potato. Ooh. (laughs) Number two, tacos. I will eat tacos anytime. Enough said. (laughs) Number one, my number one favorite meal of all time is beans and cornbread. Nothing like a big pot of beans with some nice warm cornbread. Bonus points if you include sliced red onion, a side of soft fried potatoes, and a side of vinegary spinach or collard or mustard greens. Oh, gosh. (laughs) I am so hungry right now. Let's get this podcast done so I can go make dinner. With this being food month here on the podcast, I thought I would share with you some of my favorite recipes. Last week, I shared quick chili. (laughs) This week, it's cheesy chicken broccoli rice casserole. (laughs) That's a long description for what it is. (laughs) Uh, This is something we make uh, literally every month. We just love this recipe. We make it once a month. I'm sorry for no exact measurements here. This is a meal we just quickly throw together, and we honestly don't think about it, and I didn't follow a recipe to make it. (laughs) Okay, what you'll need is about a cup of uncooked regular rice, not the instant stuff. Don't use instant rice for this. Use regular rice. Uh, Some already cooked chicken. Some chicken breasts work nice with this. Uh, Cut it up into bite-sized chunks or shred it up. Um, You'll need a package of frozen broccoli, uh, but thaw it so it's not frozen when you use it. (laughs) Um, You'll need some cheddar broccoli soup. Um, You can also use just regular cheddar cheese soup, but we like the cheddar broccoli soup because it kind of ramps up that broccoli flavor a little bit. And a lot of shredded cheddar cheese, maybe two, even three cups. I mean, you use a lot of cheese in this dish. (laughs) And of course, your favorite seasonings. Um, Salt and pepper is a must. But sometimes we'll use a Greek seasoning or an Italian seasoning and occasionally a Mexican seasoning. Uh, It depends on whatever our mood is. It's a very flexible recipe. Okay, what you do is you uh, cook the rice following the package instructions. Remember, don't use instant rice for this. it will get all mushy. (laughs) You don't want that. Okay, after the rice is done and still warm, put in the soup and a handful of cheese and mix it together to get the cheese all melted. Next, add some of the uh, seasoning, uh, the broccoli, and the chicken, and mix it all together. Okay, now you transfer that into a casserole pan, and then you top that with all your remaining cheese. Get a nice, good layer on top. In a uh, 400 degree or so, uh, I'm, I'm thinking it's 400 degree, preheated oven, put your casserole dish in there, bake it until the cheese is all melty and bubbly, We like to leave it until the cheese just starts to turn brown on top. Not burnt. You know, just a little brown on there. A little toasty. Adds a lot of flavor. Love it. Oh, gosh. I'm getting hungry just talking about this one. (laughs) Boy, food month's rough. (laughs) Well, that's it. That's an easy casserole to put together. Uh, Like I said, it's something we make at least once a month. Oh, and they, it makes awesome leftovers because that cheese, it gets all solid. <laughs> and, and you just warm it up and eat it. Great next day leftover. And it's a flexible recipe. You can add all sorts of different things to it. Uh, uh, one time we even added a can of Rotel uh, tomatoes and green chilies with the Mexican spices and made kind of a Mexican chickeny rice thing. It was really good. So uh, that's it. Hopefully you like this recipe, and I'll share another one with you next week. Did you know we have our own cafe press store? 
There you can purchase a t-shirt, coffee mug, and other great items with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on them. So please just head on over to cafepress.com slash blog Oklahoma podcast. I've added even more great music to the Blog Oklahoma bonus playlist on Spotify. There is now well over 20 hours of music for you to enjoy. Please go over to Spotify, click on the playlist, click on random, and enjoy. I have links to this and more in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. And thank you for listening to the Blog Oklahoma podcast. I'm happy to announce as of February 12th, 2017, Blog Oklahoma has 917 registered Oklahoma bloggers. Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links and bonus material from today's episode. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time. Now I need to go make dinner.